Hi everyone, this is John Pearson with Evolve Lab. So this is a quick video to show a workflow for something that came up on our forums. So if everyone's not aware, first of all, we have a open free community forum available through our website. So that's evolvebim.com. You click on membership forum. This is free to everyone and you can come in and ask questions and we can work through some pretty awesome content. So this one's specifically renumbering views on sheet. So what we could do is the user wants to renumber the views in a way of using like a spline, something that we've seen before with renumbering rooms or renumbering grids or something like that. So if I were in Revit, this is just advanced sample project and I go to draw a line. So de detail line in my case, so DL on my keyboard, I can draw a spline. So what I'll do is kind of come through all my views and renumber them or draw the path at which I want to renumber them. And I'm kind of just going to do that. So I'll do this little, this little path through my view. So it'll start here and it'll walk through and renumber them. This renumbering um, method from paths isn't anything new at all. It's something that's been covered quite a bit. It was covered by William Wong on the case blog a long time ago. Uh, I'm just using it in a little bit of a different way now. So if we look at the dynamo graph, uh, there's a few things to keep in mind is this viewport get box outline. So before this, I didn't know of any nodes that like let us do this. So I created this one and added it to rhythm, uh, viewport dot get box outline. And we'll see what it does here in a minute. From there, we do a lot of this containment test to figure out what order the spline goes through the elements. Uh, I won't really go into all that. Um, like I said, this has been used a lot. And then we have to set a built-in parameter. Why do we have to set a built-in parameter? With viewports, it's a little weird if you try to set like detail number. Sometimes it shows up as a read only, and that's because the parameter shows up several times within the Revit database on that view. It's pretty odd. So thankfully, uh, Conrad, uh, the Archilab package, gives us the ability to set built-in parameters. So I have that right here. Uh, initially, I'm setting the views to a really high number that most likely won't get used. Um, that number in my case is 900 to however many items there are. Uh, so initially, I'm setting it really high and then I'm going back and setting it to what I want. In our case, the user wanted to number them L1, L2, L3, L4, and so on. The other beauty behind this is you control the naming. I've seen other workflows too to where the sheet controls the naming because it starts, it creates a grid from A to E and then one to five and it just numbers them based on the grid they're in. This is good because it supports custom naming. That's really awesome and very useful. So what we need to do is I need to click on select model element. I'll minimize dynamo and pick that spline. Once I pick that spline, I can go ahead and launch Revit or dynamo. And I'll go ahead and throw it to my other window and we'll click run. So what we need to see is that these will actually renumber L1, L2, L3, so on. So it'll think for a quick moment. Once it's done thinking, I have 1L, 2L, 3L, 4L, 5L based on my spline. That's awesome. So if I were to change the spline, they'll renumber again. So if I just, um, I'll just delete it and redraw it. And I have to see the little spline tool. And I'll do something a little crazier. So let's see, I'll come up here, go through this viewport, hit this one, go ahead and hit this one, come back through, go all the way around. It has to be one continuous spline. That's something else to keep in mind. Go all the way around to that view and end on that view. That's pretty crazy, but it's just an example. I'll jump back in Dynamo, select my curve, click Run. Dynamo does what it's good at, and it just kind of knocks that out for me. I have 1L, 2L, 3L, 4L. Come all the way around, I have 5L. So that's a pretty unconventional naming method, but it works. That's what I wanted to illustrate. Another thing to keep in mind is this node get box outline is actually giving us the boundaries in Dynamo just in case we want to use them for anything. So not only am I supplying the bounding box that you can use for these containment tests, I'm supplying a poly curve. So that way you can go ahead and mess with that. I have a few ideas of my own of what to use this for. So 
I should be able to get those posted here soon, but I wanted to go ahead and share this with everyone. Uh, download the latest version of Rhythm to get this node and have fun. Thanks.